Sorry, I was just enjoying the nice, cool fan air. Anyways, hi everybody. It is day four of the vlog every day in August for my 30 days of painted elephants. I'm on day four and I'm loving this process so far. And I'm in love with this new elephant design that I've been playing around with. And I'm going to jump on in and do a similar style of that in terms of the layout of the painting, but I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna move on to some watercolor. I find that I need to start speeding things up a little bit. So I'm gonna see if watercolor helps kind of give me a little bit more time. So I'm gonna see if I can do it in watercolor because watercolor doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it makes some really, really cool cool techniques and and paint blooms and things like that I'm not gonna lie i've never done anything like this before so it's all going to be new so i'll pop in every once in a while and tell you what i'm learning and how things are going but to start off i thought i would give you the lowdown of how i'm setting things up because watercolor is a bit more technical than just acrylic paint. There's a lot of things you kind of have to pay attention to and that are going on. So I'm just gonna switch to the other camera and walk you through what I've got going on here. Okay, so first things first, I have my watercolor paper taped onto my watercolor board to help try and help with the buckling. I've got a piece of scotch tape running around the entire border. Um, I was told by a teacher to test that and, and put the scotch tape down and then let it cover it with water and then um, let it dry and see if the, if the scotch tape comes up. I was just frankly too lazy to do that. So I'm taking it a risk and if it doesn't work out then I'm just going to trim this area off anyways. Um, I use these clips because I like to grab the painting by these clips instead of like all over it so I don't get a bunch of finger marks all over. Um, you know, your paint, your fingers have oils on them and I always put a body glove barrier cream on my hands before I paint. So my hands have kind of sticky oils on them. So I try not to touch the watercolor uh, paper all that much. That being said, I do have to apply a sketch. So we'll see how that's all going to go down. Um, I've got two tubs of water here. Um, this is a, a, an amazing tip that I got from a teacher um, because you know you want to really have your water clean sometimes and it just gives you a lot more options. I've got a bunch of paper towel here. When you use watercolor, you definitely go through a lot more paper towel. Um, it's, 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 def it's a tool um, more than just a cleanup, uh, surface cleanup. I have my um, Beginner Artist Loft watercolor paint and then I have a brand new paint palette. I do have an old paint palette but it's got chunkies in it and I find that little pigment chunks end up in my watercolor and it's probably because this is just student grade paint um, so that's probably why that's happening but this is what I have on hand so that's what I'm going to use and then I have an assortment of brushes. Um, like I said watercolor can be a little bit of a technical um, kind of art. So I've got a 05, I've got a four, a half inch, and a 10. So to be honest with you, I have no idea what any of that means, but um, that's what I'm using. I, I don't imagine I'll use this one too much, but um, this one is a very sought after um, watercolor brush. And I never put these watercolor brushes in with my tub of brushes. Um, I never want to get acrylic paint or glue or anything on these. These are simply for watercolor. So I make sure that when I dry them, I pinch them so that they keep their nice tips. And then when I store them, I actually store them like this in my little box and everything's hunky-dory and everything stays all together. So that is my supplies for the day.
This has been a ton of fun, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. But I love where I'm at right now. So in the terms of the way that I like to paint to make the wrinkles on the elephant, making the drips, watercolor is perfect. You literally make a water line and then draw the paint line at the top and then the paint just drips into those water lines and I just think it looks amazing. So I think I'm at the point right now where I have to let this bad boy dry and that is the frustrating part about watercolors is you have to be patient and let things dry. So I tried a little experiment and it failed miserably. Elephants' trunks have wrinkles going down, but they also have a lot of wrinkles going across. So as you just saw in the video, I attempted to do the across wrinkles and I just wrecked it all. So, but I am not giving up. Um, I just need to let it dry. So I am absolutely loving this area right here. This is exactly what I have been going for. So I'm gonna be able to get back to this place, but I have to wait for this area to dry. This is where I just sprayed and tried to run it this way and it, it didn't work at all, but I'm not giving up yet. So I have no idea what's going on with the ear, yeah, I just don't know. I think I'm just going to let the whole thing dry one more time and go on from there and then see what happens. about making mistakes and learning from them because now that I've gone in and done this after having that big mistake, I am understanding the watercolor that much more and I am actually getting the results that I'm, I'm really looking for. So don't despair if you ever have something that you feel is a mistake because there are such huge opportunities to learn. I'm not gonna hold it up for long because it's still very wet, but I just wanna show you how happy I am with this area right here. This is exactly what I was trying to accomplish with these 
blooms and the blending and the mixing of the colors very organically and gorgeously. I'm gonna take some photos of the area that I'm loving right now so that you can get a really good idea of of what's going on here with these beautiful colors. And I have to say some one thing. Um, these are the colors that are just naturally coming out of the tube. I know that a lot of watercolorists have to mix their tube paint to make some really funky colors. Um, but this particular set has this Prussian blue and that and the um, violet are really the only two colors that I'm using right now and the way that they're blending together in this beautiful emerald green and emerald purple. Well, I don't know if there's such thing as an emerald purple. Beautiful jewel tones and they're absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna take some close-ups for you right now so that you can see just what's going on here before it dries and then I'll show you the comparison once it dries after. Okay, he's all done. You ready to see it? There he is. So, a couple of lessons learned here. Number one, the Sakura gel pen that I like to use does not go well over watercolor pigment. Um, you can see on my hand here, I've got all these little white squiggles. That was for me having to rub the pen into a hand to get the pigment off. Sorry, my husband just walked by the door. 
And the other lesson I learned was that when I pulled the tape away from the edges, you can see here that I have these really pretty edges, on the top, I didn't go all the way to the edge of the tape with watercolor. So I actually had to retape it and I just went in with a really, really light purple wash to finish those edges. So if you are using the tape around the edges thing, um, not a good idea to leave like little white areas. I thought it might look cool, but it actually just looked unfinished. So I had to go back in and tape that up and, and finish him. Uh, but all in all, I enjoyed the process. It was a lot of fun, but it really wasn't that different from acrylic. Um, I will attempt some watercolor in the future because I, I do believe that watercolor can be a very quick project, uh, but just for this particular one, um, it just wasn't as fast as I had expected. But I think at the end of the day, I, I'm really happy with the finished piece. Um, you guys comment below and let me know if I helped you learn anything or what you think of this particular elephant here. Um, and of course, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see tomorrow's elephant, be sure to subscribe. And of course, follow along with the hashtag 30 days of painted elephants on Instagram. Uh, this is day four of my vlog every day in August project and so far so good. I hope that you guys are enjoying watching the videos as much as I am enjoying painting them along with you. And thank you for coming on this creative journey with me today. I kind of was in uncharted territory and it was a lot of fun and if I helped you learn something or if you learned from one of my mistakes, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to get your feedback. Thanks so much and we'll see you tomorrow.